In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In a few minutes, I'm going to invite up some of our inquirers, and I will say some prayers on a number of them and enlist them as catechumens. Before this, though, I'd like to share a few words from a fr priest friend of mine concerning catechism and entry into the Orthodox Church. A catechumen is an individual engaged in the process of becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ and entering into his holy church. In the ancient church, the catechumenate, or the time during which one was a catechumen, often lasted as much as three years. This was the case because Greeks and barbarians were polytheists and idolatry and its superstitions were deeply embedded in the Greco-Roman way of life. It took time to purge these unseemly beliefs and practices and to form a Christian mind and disposition. Catechism itself included not only participation in some of the divine services, but also formal catechesis, formal oral instruction from a teacher, often a bishop or an appointed catechist, special prayers of exorcism and entreaty and extensive involvement in the fellowship of the church, which enabled catechumens to form the new social connections that would become the most important bonds in their lives. This authentic integration into the family of believers with a supreme bond established by the blood of Christ, not only not by the blood of one's biological parents, but the blood of Christ has always been a central hallmark of the Christian church. The believer's ultimate loyalty is not to one's earthly family or tribe, but to Christ and his church. No one who loves mother or father or siblings more than Christ and the believers is worthy of Christ or his kingdom. This process, the catechumenate, is serious, and the usual catechesis takes a minimum of one year. And there is no such thing as a quick catechism. And the basic rule is that the deeper the foundation a catechumen receives, the higher the tree of his Christian life will grow. One cannot embrace the orthodox way of life quickly and the church and her faith uphold the universe. There is no reason to rush since the church is not going anywhere. We pray that the catechumens will be zealous and focused and stay the course in a sustainable pace. As you know, every person received into the church is given a sponsor or a godparent. The role of the godparent is extremely serious. The bond formed between the sponsor and the one being baptized is deep, mystical, and eternal. You might say that baptismal water is thicker than blood. Godparents cannot be changed or replaced any more than one's biological parents can be. The relationship between sponsor and the sponsored ought to be nourished and deepened throughout life by mutual prayer and encouragement. Uh, catechumens may in fact wonder how exactly it is that they are to identify a godparent or a sponsor. This can take place in various means, by various means, but usually takes place naturally as the catechumen integrates himself into the life of the parish. Affinities will be made and relationships established. In the course of such, the catechumen might inquire of one of you, asking if you would be willing to stand as his sponsor. Or one of you might inquire of the catechumen if they have found a sponsor. Obtaining a godparent is a significant decision and ought to be made prayerfully. All godparents must be approved by the pastor of the church. That's me. And it's best, therefore, that the catechumen clear a particular person with me uh, prior to soliciting the potential sponsor in order to avoid potential confusion. Each catechumen is reminded that the process of catechism is a road of repentance 
and faith which will lead to union with the Holy Trinity and membership in the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Such a road is a road toward Christ and away from the evil one. For this reason, a catechumen should not be surprised to encounter demonic opposition during the course of catechism. Unexpected challenges, that is, that cause their heart trouble, that might cause them to question their path, cause them to question their intentions, and cause them to question their very desire to draw near to Christ and his church. Indeed, some of you catechumens have already experienced such opposition. And I'm confident that these obstacles can be overcome by the help and mercy of God and the strong resolve on the part of the catechumen. May God keep their, their paths straight. Now, those of you who I've spoken to this week about being made catechumens this morning, please come up and join me at the front of the church here facing the icon wall. Subdeacon John, would you mind moving the podium, please? Sign of thine only begotten Son, be signed in their hearts and thoughts, so that they may flee from the vanity of the world and every evil plot of the enemy, and that they may follow thy precepts and grant to the Lord that thine holy name may remain not denied of them, as they are united in good time to thy holy church and perfected through the fearful mysteries of thy Christ in order that, as they conduct their life according to thy commandments and preserve the seal unbroken, they may obtain the blessedness of thy elect in thy kingdom. By the grace and love for mankind of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed together with thine all-holy and good and life-giving spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. 